now. There we go. Fantastic. Thank you. So hello, my name is Kristen Denver. I'm the senior instructional designer at Sonoma State University in our Center for Teaching and Educational Technology. And I'm joined by Kyle Falbo, who is our LMS admin, as well as Dr. Omaida Ortega, who is one of our mathematics faculty and has been our square faculty fellow on this project. Uh, I really just wanted to give an overview of our project, which was using Canvas data, the challenges and opportunities that we uh, encountered. Uh, go ahead, Kyle. So the bird's eye view is uh, where we started, where we are, and where we plan to go. We sought out to collect and interpret data based on two different questions. The first of which had to do with the survey of student and faculty satisfaction with online education at Sonoma State University and what that data looked like. And the second had to do with the correlation between Canvas usage data and DFW rates. So how does Canvas, uh, students' interactions with Canvas and the different way that they're using the LMS impact those rates. Our intention once we got our, our hands on that data was to work with Dr. Ortega's math students to interpret that data and come up with some meaningful uh, outcomes. That was our goal. However, what we found was that the Canvas usage data was in a format that made it really difficult to identify, interpret, or hand off. So that created a barrier for us. And that one uh, aspect of the data where we are now is that the Canvas API is available, making it easier to ingest and share that data. And Kyle's going to go into a little bit deeper dive about what that looks like, what the challenges were that we encountered, and how the new API is going to help us sort of overcome that barrier. Where we plan to go is a continued collaboration with Dr. Ortega's uh, statistical consulting courses in order to interpret the data during the next academic year, although that might be outside of the SQUARE project. So <clears throat> Kyle and Dr. Ortega, I'll hand it over to you to sort of take the group through the deeper dive. Hello, um, I hope that you can hear me. I had to put on my headphones. Um, my name is Omaira Ortega, uh, mathematics faculty, as Kristen mentioned, and the uh, Square Associate this year. Uh, our original research question, which was very well received within the Square group, was this uh, idea of looking at student and faculty's satisfaction with perception of engagement with online education at Sonoma State um, coming out of the pandemic. Um, this we were very interested to hear uh, what the Sonoma State community had to say about this topic. And um, we had actually gone down this rabbit hole actually pretty deep uh, before we learned that Sonoma State had actually engaged in a very similar study just um, the year before. Um, this UPSIA, that's um, the University Professional and Consulting Education Association's um, survey on this very topic. And uh, we, in that survey, it was found that there's sort of a 50-50 split between the respondents, you know, who wanted like none or less online classes versus more. And so um, after uh, realizing that this study would be um, essentially redundant if we conducted it, uh, and uh, we then decided that we should move on to another research question that Kyle is going to talk about. Kyle, you're muted. Well, in the meantime, I can All right, so, okay. <laughs> so, around, so around this time, we also discovered uh, the data that's available with the Canvas data portal. And so we are looking for uh, specifically correlations between Canvas usage data and DFW rates, among some other uh, great access to data that we had. And what we found was that while that data is massive and you can actually get it in daily snapshots, that the organization of those flat files uh, was using um, ID information that wasn't consistent with our own course ID system. So there was no way for us to identify where the, 
the specific data was coming from in terms of the courses that they were associated with, because the, the, the numbering scheme that Canvas was using for that data set was not consistent with our own. So that could have put us a stop in that, but around that, that time that we realized that there was this kind of roadblock for us was um, that Canvas started to offer this semester a uh, admin analytics uh, course. And so um, if anybody is interested, look into this. Um, if you've got someone on your team that might be interested in going down this road, um, because the admin course uh, really gives you a, a larger scope of um, the Canvas structure. And in, it, it, within the first month, answered a lot of real, real longstanding problems that we had at our institution, um, not necessarily related to data, but that that were useful. But the final course, which I am currently actively in, which is using the Canvas API. And so um, the Canvas API um, gives us uh, very much the same level of access to data that the Canvas data portal offered previously, but rather than it being um, this kind of these flat files that are just data dump, daily dumps of the data, um, you're actually doing API calls um, for your institution. So I just briefly want to show what the API, um, they've got kind of like a, a, a nice demo site that gets you familiar with the usage of the API, but I just want to show this because some of the usages are really, really, um, I think, applicable to any of your institutions. So, you, you know, you, you have to get yourself a API access token and go through that, that kind of process. There's some technical aspects behind this, but then all of the available API calls that are there are listed on this site. And every institution, this, this API uh, URL is not unique. So, you know, we're using our test instance here, but this slash slash doc slash API slash live, um, that right there gives you access to your own institution's API list, which mu very much mirrors the API documentation. So just to take a look at this one here, let's say we're in the analytics and within analytics, we can look at a Git for account ID analytics on current activity. So this would give us page view hits across all courses in a say department. And so we could be measuring activity at the department level. We could be measuring the activity at the course level and that would allow us to be able to answer some questions about like course activity in a high dfw rate course as opposed to all the courses say in that department right so we'd be able to make some correlation uh, arguments with this api tool um potentially in the very very near future as soon as this course gets wrapped up in the next month or so um, other ones that i just wanted to highlight here uh would be say um, within courses like effective due dates, um, if it's the implementation of due dates or extensions of due dates uh, effective in a high DFW rate course as opposed to their usage, say, in a non high DFW rate course, right? So you can start to make comparisons and things like usage of assignment due dates. The, there's lots and lots of different places to go with this discussion topics, use of discussion topics. Are these discussions getting read by students, unread by students? Um, there's a lot of information that's all behind this API. So I highly recommend anybody just get access to your own uh, institution's uh, API live tool, just so you can familiarize yourself with the possibilities. Um, and then if you can get yourself somebody trained up to um, uh, start using that API. So despite these challenges using the Canvas data, there's hope. <laughs> um, I'm very excited um, because my engagement with this project was 100% for data analysis. That's where my skill set lies. And so as we try to answer these questions, um, you know, what is the relationship between DFW rates and uh, engagement with Canvas, um, we quickly realized that I was not the right person for that job because I don't have that. I don't have the knowledge of API. I don't have the knowledge of Ruby. And so um, in the coming year, um, I won't be the square faculty person next year, but 
I will get the opportunity because of Kyle's commitment to this course and to learning the API, I will one day have access to this data and um, I will be using it with some of my students in my statistical consulting course It's every semester and I am always in need of data for this class. So I'm really looking forward to conducting this analysis in the future. Um, and then also it was mentioned, you know, the chancellor's office is also developing a new back end for this data. Um, I was really happy to hear that at the start um, when you inter when you introduced our guest earlier. And as Kyle mentioned, CTET is also developing their own protocol for archiving and recording these daily snapshots. So with that, I want to thank everyone for listening to us today. And our emails are there if you have any further questions. <laughs>